day Time to play the game <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Toe Knows Everything, the podcast. Today I'm thrilled to have a special guest and someone who I'm proud to call a friend, Mr. Pat DeRalzio, who is one of the pillars of the Vaughn community. Pat is involved in all sorts of philanthropic activities, supporting tons of charities, volunteering for the Vaughn Soccer Club, and running his own enterprise, Arcadia Academy of Music. So, Pat, I want to welcome you, and I'm thrilled to have you here, buddy. Thank you, Tony. You? Pleasure to be here. Good, good. Thank good. you. It's a Saturday. you got all the Bond soccer kids playing today. Yeah. It's amazing having families here. You being a family guy, this must be exciting for you to watch. 100%. I mean, as you know, I'm uh, the executive vice president of Bond Soccer, so not only like, we get involved as a volunteer, as uh, board members, but also I come on the Saturdays and do my coaching duties. Yeah, I've seen you coaching there. Who would you say your coaching style is most like? Like uh, a leapy? What's your coaching style? A Pat style. <laughs> Pat uh, Burns style? No, <laughs> myself style. What would you say Pat style is? Uh, you, you know what? I mean, a lot of people come up to you and ask you, hey, you know what makes a great coach, right? Then I always tell people a great person, right? And that's the model that I try to live by, right? Amazing. And Amazing. then, you know, everything comes naturally after that. I think you so. hit the nail on the head. Being a good person translates into everything. Coaching, Absolutely. parenting, volunteering in the community. Right. So, Pat, today I want to talk about a whole variety of things. I want to start off because, obviously, you're big on soccer and big on music. Who gets more chicks, musicians or soccer players? <laughs> That's what I want to know because you're involved in both. So, you tell me the truth. Wow, wow. Okay, this is not my life experience anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, it's your friends, right? It's, it's my your friend. friends. Okay, your friends said. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I, I, I played soccer all my life. I was, a, I was a keeper. So, I mean, you know what? Would I love to live the soccer life? Absolutely. You know, I, I'm pretty sure soccer players have a good life at a good level. So soccer so, players get more chicks? Bro, I would say. I <laughs> okay, would say. Good. I would say. <laughs> Tell me how you got involved with the soccer community. Was it you playing yourself as a youngster, playing goalkeeper? Yeah, yeah. How did you get involved in, into the executive vice president role of Bond? Sure. I mean, I played all my life. I played as a keeper. I played uh, not at the highest level, but at the level that, you know, and plus opportunities. There's so many different opportunities today than what we had when we used to play, right? right. Uh, but again, we all get into it for the reason that your kid got into it, right? Right. So my son, the same thing as a goalie, as a keeper, right? So I coached him. Uh, so you followed for, in your footsteps. Exactly. Okay. I try to live my life through his eyes, I guess, okay. right? And so what I did is uh, I coached him at an early age, right up to U18, and then the opportunity as a, a Vaughn uh, coach uh, that I was asked to run for the board, and eight years later, here I am sitting as uh, their executive vice president. Wow, so that's amazing. So from a youth player yourself, to a parent, a volunteer coach, and then you're in the executive. Exactly. What are some of the things that are the exciting things that we're about to see with Bond Soccer Club? I know you got a lot on the go with the club. There's a huge membership. What's coming on the horizon for Bond Soccer? It's a secret. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got to reveal it here first. Yeah, if, if, if real, right? Uh, you know, I, it's, uh, number one, not because I'm part of the board of Bond Soccer, right? But I guess, you know, you judge a club or you know, from your board member, from your board members, the type of people we have on our board, uh, that, you know, we all have a clear agenda where we want to be with the club, right? Uh, Vaughn Soccer has at the highest level OPDL program, League One, high performance. So we really cover all the bases as a community club. Even at the, at the uh, sorry, at, uh, my God, House League level, right? right. The House League level, we have one of the recreational, we have one of the largest House League levels, right? Yeah. But again, we always believe as a community club, you should be, having the whole the whole package right now as everybody knows that there's an announcement with York 9 coming in right you know there's some plans that you know um, Vaughn team so whether city of Vaughn whether it's other clubs getting a little bit more involved in supporting the York 9 program which is a, it's an exciting time for soccer right now so what, what do you think about York 9 and Canadian professional soccer as a whole I think it's a great idea right I'm I, for sure, there will be challenges, right? But we all know, Tony. I mean, over the year, how many, how many leagues did we have or tried within sure. uh, within Canada that weren't really very successful? Hopefully, people have different minds, open minds, you know, open better ideas, and hopefully, we can get it done this year, uh, this time around. 
Good, and some of the coaching staff are phenomenal local coaches and coaches with uh, with Bond. They've coached with uh, other organizations. Yep. Is it our possibility that it could be successful locally, more at the local level, because it's more grassroots than a Toronto FC, let's say, which is national and North American? Uh, uh, that's a good question. I mean, on our end of it, we know uh, one of the uh, York Nine uh, coaches, the first, uh, the first uh, assistant, is Carmen Azaco, who's our technical coach, uh, our technical director of Von Soccer, and Serge DeLuca, who's the second in line, yeah, right? Both great guys, amazing yeah, coaches, a yeah. lot of experience. Yeah. Uh, to me, I mean, this is my opinion, a guy like Carmen is probably one of the top youth coaches in the country. For sure. Right? For sure. And so seeing that also with Jimmy, right? But seeing that team going moving forward, we hope it's successful, right? But again, it all comes down to, you said, grassroots, how communities, you know, are going to support this program, so right? Well, we wish Carmen the best of luck. Absolutely. We see the amazing work that the board and the volunteer coaches do here every week. Thank it's you. a really well-run organization. I can tell you I've seen all kinds of programs, and by far, recreation-wise and rep-wise, probably one of the best in the province, I've got to say. Thank you. And you know what? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, we say it with take pride. <laughs> but we'll take it 100%. We know the hard work that we put into this. Who's your favorite soccer player professional right now? Oh, that's a good one. Here, uh, as a goalie, to me, it was always uh, Gigi Buffon. I mean, the, sure, there's better players. You could, you know, there's a Ronaldo, there's a Messi. I mean, you could go on forever, right? But who, somebody that I idolize or even with my son growing up, you know, whether it was Zoff or Gigi Buffon. Were you surprised he went to Paris Saint-Germain? Should he have stayed with Juventus one more year, even if it was on the bench as a mentor? If he stayed on the bench as a mentor, I, I would have liked that for sure, right? But I guess he felt he had a couple more years to, that he could play. He probably knew it was time for change, and change is good, right? Yeah, I mean, sure. you know, with Paris, you know, he's, he's on and off, I guess. He doesn't play all the games, right? But yeah. again, look at his age. You got to give it to the guy, Absolute. right? Absolutely. Gigi's a legend, amazing. One, Plus 40 100%. goalkeeper, still performing at the highest levels. For Incredible. Sure. 100%. Amazing goalie. Amazing. Let's yeah. change gears a little bit. Sure. From soccer, I want to go to business. Sure. Tell us a little bit about Arcadia Academy of Music and how it started. I know your dad. Uh, was involved, your brother's involved. Tell us a little bit about the origins. Sure. Well, Arcadia, I mean, we're celebrating 35 years this year. Amazing. Right? 35 uh, years 30, of business isn't easy. Uh, absolutely. And you know what? We're proud of it. I mean, sure, I can see we'll take all the credit, my brother and I, but you know, we, my father sacrifices, you know, 35 years. One of the, uh, the first music school in the city of Vaughan mm -hmm. uh, opened up 35 years ago. He took a chance. Right, and uh, he started 35 years, uh, 2001, 2002. Uh, my brother and I bought my father out. Right, uh, it was a hard decision for him. It was hard for him to let go. Right, but for him, there's a lot of changes, like everything. Right, you know, for him to keep up. Right, then we went into the franchising and uh, side of it, and that's where my brother and I took it to the next level. Right, right. The next level was franchising. We have 11 locations right now, and. Uh, you know, and we're expanding also going internationally, right? So what's your vision? Obviously, you just said you're going international. Your father started it. You took it over. Your brother and you took it to the next level. Now you're going international. Tell us a little bit about that and what it takes to get to that next level. Yeah. <laughs> Number one, you always got to gotta be humble. Thank, you know, you got to be thankful for what you have. That's, that's the number one, right? Mm -hmm. And number two, as, as I'm saying the same thing, you also have to think you're the best that, that there is, right? You gotta have confidence in uh, 100%. Belief. You know, when, when I played or when my son played or soccer players, when they go out there, they don't worry about the next guy. They worry about themselves and they say, you know, I'm the best guy out here, and you worry about number it's one. It's all about your mindset. 100%. You gotta right? believe it. That's right. And what we wanted to do, we didn't wanna be the typical music school, we wanted to be outside the box, okay. right? So when we, uh, you know, 11 locations, uh, over eight, 9,000 students right now. Uh, one of Amazing. the top schools in, uh, in Canada. Uh, we've won awards, accolades, over, over 19 industry awards. Uh, Royal Conservatory, we have huge partnerships with them that a lot of people don't know about, right? And with the connections that we have and the partnerships we had, we see ourselves now going to the next level, right? The next level, like we said, we're looking to going internationally, right? And, wow. and you know, people who follow me, they know where I'm going. We're looking at China, that there's interest in China, in Beijing right now. So China, obviously a huge market, over a billion Absolutely. people. Absolutely. Uh, tons of room for expansion. Yeah. Where do you see um, the role of North American business in China in the future? Because wow. for the last decade or so or more, 20 years, 25 years, we've seen 
the role of Chinese business impacting North America. How do you see North American companies infiltrating China? Uh, no. Well, the, the only thing I see, I can compare about with us, right? For so what, for us, it's an actual service. So it's an actual product and right. where that will be issues, right? Right. And then our partnership is not really with government or anything like that. It's with uh, companies or universities in China that line up with our morals or ethics. I know sometimes it's hard to believe because how Chinese run businesses, right? But yeah. we're fortunate. We found a, a, a family in China, uh, Beijing, north of Beijing, that they're... You know, their, their, their alignment is exactly what ours are. You right? found the right fit in China. 100%. They're on 100. the same wavelength, same uh, goal, same vision as you. 100%, Fantastic. right? Fantastic. Uh, people that give back to their community, people, you know, that, yeah. So being in business for 35 years, obviously you come with a wealth of experience. What would you say the number one lesson you could give a young entrepreneur is today? If someone's starting out, whether it's in the music business, sports business, whatever business, yeah. what advice could you give them? I mean, stick to your goals, right? You know, whatever goals you set out, stick to them. It's not going to happen the first time. I mean, how many times do we have to go back to we have to go back to the trenches? But you got to make sure you're going to come out. You're going to come out stronger, right? Right. Believe in yourself, and then I mean, at the end of the day, is that you know, just go for it. Don't listen to what people have to say. Everybody's got an advice. Everybody's got an opinion, right? For us, you know what? We learn by our mistakes, and it's okay to make mistakes, even financial mistakes. I mean, you know, yeah. but we, we do what we have to do, right? As an entrepreneur, you know, believe that you're the best. Good. Being Italian, of Italian heritage, you're Napolitan, do you feel that influence played a big role in the success of the business? Because obviously, some Napolitan musicians, Mario Merola, and countless others have gotten world success, worldwide recognition. Do you think that helped your dad maybe when he launched it? Times have changed. So you go back 35 years, it was a, it was the Paisano, Paisano deal, That's right. right? So a lot of Italians you can imagine in Warbridge or even when he started at Eklund and in Oakwood, uh, the Caledonia area, right. Jane and Shepherd, right? When we moved to Woodbridge, everybody just moved up. So back then, yes, right? That for yeah. sure helped my dad 100%. Today, no. Today it's changed. It's a different uh, world. 100%. You know what? As much as we want to say in Woodbridge, we live in Woodbridge, a lot of Italians or... I mean, here, look at soccer down here. I mean, right. you know, it's like there's every... Yeah, the world's every, represented. Every nationality, yeah. And Vaughn has changed. I mean, Absolutely. you know, Vaughn has changed, right? So is it helping us now? No. No and yes. We just help. We're growing to adapt to what's the changes. Right. And that's important, right? So always adapt. Yeah. Always adapt. And be different and be different and be different and be different. Good. Never settle with your never. never settle on your laurels. Never rest on your laurels. Never. Make sure you're always evolving. Where'd you go different. to high school? <laughs> I went to Downsview. Oh, the, one of the best schools, man. I was at Boylan, just down the street. So, okay, so you're a Downsview boy. Yeah, so this yeah. is this is why I get your vibe. Yeah. We came there from, you go. We came from the Wilson. same area. You Absolutely. got it. Uh, you ever watch Gamora? It's on Netflix. It's a Napolitan gangster Absolutely. show. Absolutely. Yeah, my son got hooked me the on it. The best show I watched the on whole TV, thing. hands down. For some sure. of the best actors. If you haven't watched it, you got to watch it. Oh, I watched it. it. My son hooked me on it. Got me hooked on it. So the Napolitan yeah. culture comes through. The love of music, the opening scene is them listening sure. to a song in the car. Yeah. So I see the connection, right? It's all about the soul and 100%, the spirit. 100%. 100%. That's amazing. So, Pat, you're in business. You're involved with soccer. You're also involved with a lot of charities. Um, you're helping out different groups, philanthropic organizations. You're involved with politicians. You're everywhere. Everywhere on social media, I see Pat. Pat and his brother. Pat and his brother. Tell me how you got involved in all these organizations and helping the community the way you do. Number one, it didn't just happen overnight, right? I mean, you know, it's I'm not saying that you had to work for it and that was your goal to get along with politicians. Oh, sure, it's always a goal to get along with everybody, right? right. But it's not a, I need to get to know this person or that person or that person to get where we are at right because i always say it and i say it very happily you know what we've done it with we are where we are with without anybody's help in that sense right but the the seeds that we planted and and the people that we are made the connections that we are today right you know giving back to our community we shouldn't be a company taking from community all the time right, right? you know is how do we give back and this is how what makes us different right and you know what politicians they're people they understand right and you know and we're lucky we, we live in a city that uh, amazing leadership yeah. right and uh, 
Even now with our uh, scholarship awards, we named it after the Maritza Bevilacqua uh, Scholarship Award. The Mayor of Vaughan. Uh, the Mayor of Vaughan, right? And uh, we looked at, sure, there's a, a lot of options. We could have named it uh, Carmen de Rouse or my father, right? Yeah. But again, there's a lot of things we do for my dad, but we felt that, you know what? We want to show, I mean, you know, people that have the same beliefs, the same mm -hmm. morals, the same ethics, and the same thing as my dad, and that's why we came up with the Maritza. And, you know, we're more, you know, it's something that we're very happy what we did, right? Um, uh, for us, it's amazing mayor. Well, that's amazing that you do all this work and you give back all the time. You do a lot of work in the schools here in Vaughan and uh, even beyond. Do you consider yourself more of an educator than an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur first, educator second? Because you, you're, you're yeah. working with these That's kids good. all the yeah. time, yeah. educating them, teaching yeah. them the love of music. For sure, for sure. Well, I don't know if a lot of people know about this about me, right? Is that I have no music background, right? So even on the piano, middle seat. It's pretty amazing you have this successful yeah. music corporation and you don't have a music background. Zero. So my brother, that's where the music comes from, right? My father, same thing, didn't have any music background. But I think what's so important, this just proves you do what you believe in, right? Awesome. You know, you, you work, if you know, it's like soccer. Yes, I played soccer, that's great, right? But but at the end of the day, that's really the same demographics, right? You love right. working with kids, you love working with community, right? And education, yeah, of course, right? Educating doesn't have to be music. Right. I mean, you know, exactly. music, take music doesn't make you a professional musician. Playing right. soccer doesn't make you a professional soccer player. It's what music brings into your life. And it might enrich your life just to make you a better person. And that's what I'm talking, that's right? what I was gonna say, right? That's it's, amazing. It's really, you know, that's amazing. That you do so knowing that you're involved with all these charities and you do all this work, but you also have this corporate side to you, yeah. let me ask you a political question. Here do you, you go. like Donald Trump? Are you a Trump supporter? Wow. That's what I want to know. Uh, no, not at all. Not Tell me why you're not a Trump supporter, because I got to tell you, wow. Trump has a lot of pros and cons, and yeah. I support a lot of what he says. Yeah. I don't like the delivery, yeah. per se, but I think a lot of his policies um, are in the right context, but the delivery and the message is wrong. I, I, I guess I'm almost at the same place with you, right? But to me, there's more, I, I, you know, it doesn't make, there's not a difference what, you know, what I'm going to say now. I mean, I know you're a great guy. I know you for the longest time, so I know where your morals are too. At the end of the day, I, to me, the way people are treated or people, I get it. He wants he wants change. He wants differently what, you know, and um, didn't make a doesn't wouldn't have changed if somebody else got in there. Right. Washington is just broken in the way the Americans do things, right? But I mean, but you need somebody in there who could work with everybody. I mean, that, right. that's how bad I think Washington is right now, right? And him, he's got his own issue. You know, it's almost like on and off the field, right? right. So personally or whatever. I, I don't. I don't think you know he he was the best choice at that time. Do you think right? Hillary Clinton would have been a better president today? And not uh, just because she's a woman, because a lot of people yeah. say she would have been better because she's a woman. She would have been more sensitive, yeah. more of an emotional intelligence. Yeah. I don't see a better person, a, a better president, but I think would would have been status quo. I think it would have been just what used to be in the past. You know, there would have been no change, right? right? Because I think that in two years, a year and a half. There might be a different president in there. Who's going to be president in two years? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I really didn't look at. I, I mean, I hope. You think Trump still has a shot? I hope not. But, you know, I hope Biden would be, you know, again. Even at 78 years old, you'd rather go with Biden. Oh. Not Trump is probably the same age or a couple almost, years younger. Almost, almost. Yeah, but, but I'm saying, you know, like I said, the perception is Biden looks like he's a good person. Me going back, what makes a good coach right. or whatever, is a good person. I think that's what the Americans need right now. Because whether he's in there for another four years, it's going to go back, right? right. And so whatever whatever he, like a minestrone, whatever right. he did there, right. I don't think it's going to stay like that, right? Okay. So so, it's, so you it's, see change coming? Well, well yeah, well, for the better, Okay, I so I'm going to put you on the spot again. <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it. Well, Let's bring politics, it to Canada. Really Is Doug Ford a good person? Well, I don't know Doug as a person, right? Uh, wow, I have a lot of That's friends. That's a tough that, one. So yeah, you're thinking. Yeah, See, yeah, I think Doug's amazing, yeah, and I don't care yeah, about saying it. Yeah, you yeah, know, I, I yeah. think what Doug is doing yeah. is he's rebalancing the budget. It's just like at home. If you got a, a spouse or a sibling or a kid sure, who's spending sure. yeah. uh, on their credit card recklessly yeah. and uh, has but, no idea of budget, you're going to get into trouble. That's right. And, and I guess going on that, that's what I love about Doug. That at the end of the day, he's a, he's realistic. He's a, he's he's a guy 
Look, I always remember the video that this brother did. I don't know if you guys remember. Well, when he was smoking crack? No, or not that one there. Not that one, okay. When, when he was taking... Because everyone's got their demons. <laughs> For sure, 100%. Everyone's got their demons. 100%. People make mistakes and we can forgive. And I think Rob was a, a pretty good guy for the community oh, as well. Oh, for sure. And if you remember the video that when he took out all the cards out and he was saying, I'm making X amount of dollars, why do right. I need this benefit? Why do I need right. that benefit? Right. I don't know if you remember that right. video, yes, right? Yes, I do, in yeah. City Hall. Yep. Exactly. So so when you look at that, that's, you know, and that's where I see Doug, right? Being right. that. Some, some of the decisions he made with the counselors and whatever it could have been done differently i agree how he's done things but you know what i just think you know sometimes we gotta think take a couple of steps back and you know and think about it but what i love is the the people that he has around them right. so that's why that's the so difference he surrounds himself with good people uh, amazing, smart people amazing people amazing, right? people amazing people so that's why i think he won't go off the rail as as a trump Got it. Right? And I think he listens to the people. And like I said, he's got amazing people around Good. him. Good. Well, we wish the best for Ontario, Bond, and the rest of Canada. 100%. Quickly, in three seconds, give yeah. me one word to describe Trudeau. Not the original, Trudeau. the son. Let's say, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one uh, word. Well, wow. Three. Uh, grow up, two, I guess. One. Grow up. Okay, yeah. two words, but I yeah, get it. Well, I get it. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. So we could be coming in for some change, you think, in the next I, uh, federal election? I hope. I hope. I, I hope. I, you know, just okay. we got to see who's the leaders at the other parties That's and it. what they have to offer and what, what they're all about. Okay. So. You're one of the visionaries of On, and I know that because of all the work that you do in the background. You're very humble. You don't publicize all the hard work you do. Volunteer tons of time. I know you're working with community groups, YMCA, etc. What is your vision of Bond? Because Bond has its vision for the next 20 years. For sure. You're part of that, and you're part of, of setting the road for that vision. Where do you see Bond heading in the next 10, 20 years? You know what? I think what we have accomplished, we, I mean, we're residents, right? And uh, in great leadership is, is incredible. I mean, who would have ever thought of, a, of a, we've always talked of a hospital in Vaughan. Right. Or the subway coming up to Vaughan. And Maritza Bivalacqua just did a... Uh, our mayor just did an uh, in, in announcement. So he's been an amazing uh, leader. Sure, a university for, for, now in Vaughan, right? You got Niagara University That's Teachers right. College right. opening up. He's doing That's tons right. of work. That's right. The one thing that I, I find hard to believe, but you know, he's been sort of nonpartisan. He came from the Liberal Party, right? Because he was a cabinet minister, but he has been really good in, in developing relationships, extending a, an olive branch to all people from all parties, and getting things done. 100%. Which I can really appreciate and admire. And I know that you've been part of that. So, so you see the vision continuing of, of for sure. more development, you know, economic uh, uh, development. One hundred percent. The conversation that I had with Mauricio, amazing guy, amazing mayor, it is about that. Get along with everybody. It doesn't matter what color uh, right. that you, whether it's liberal or PC. You know, you need, you need, you can't just show your color and that's right. it. Right. You got to work with everybody, and you know that's. You know, you got to give it That's to him. That's a great right? takeaway. That's amazing. You got to work with everybody, yeah. whether you appreciate their opinion or not. You have to respect someone's opinion, whether you agree with it or not. So that is an amazing takeaway. 100%. Okay, final question. Okay. We're hosting the World <laughs> Cup. Been three final questions. <laughs> this is the final, final question. We're hosting the World Cup in 2026. Yeah, You're sure. a big part of the soccer community here in Bonn in Ontario. Yeah. Where do you see Canada? How do you see them wow. performing? Wow. What is your opinion of what is going to happen for Canada in the 2026 World Cup? Well, number one, I'm not sure. I'm not clear if they automatically qualify. I, I don't know if that was. I don't know. If I the, think that is one of the uh, keys to them getting the World Cup was that Canada had a stipulation that they would qualify. Okay. So the cool thing is they're going to be in the World Cup. There, That's amazing. Right. right? Now moving on, I, you know, at the youth level, guys, at youth level, I, I think we're amazing, right? You know, at a certain age, I think Canada is doing a great job. You know, uh, uh, developing youth players, right? You know, we see the difference. I've been in many tournaments. We uh, a couple of years ago we did one in Italy. Nobody forgets that one there, right? You know, at the youth level we've done great. At the higher level, it's a little bit different, right? I, right. I think it's going to be tough. And I mean, you don't have to hear from me. History has proven it. I mean, you know, we have what 35, 36 million people. We can't That's sometimes right. put on. It's we tough. can't. We can't put 11. You know, Although other countries have done it, small well, nations yeah, have done yeah. it in the World Cup in the yeah, past. And, uh, you don't have to listen to my stats. Right, look, New look, Zealand yeah. and other countries with small populations, Costa Rica with 3 million people. 100%. And you know, it took the stage. 100%. Okay, that's amazing. Right. Final thing. I know that was last, but this is just the final thing. <laughs> greatest musician of all time, I got to know. Who is your greatest musician of all time? Then I'll tell you mine, and then we're going to wrap it up. You know what? Um, <laughs> I, I, I got a playlist on my phone, and my kids call it, you know... Uh, I don't want to say the word, but my, my kids call it uh, 
like uh, sans, sad song music, right? Look, I'm in the music business. I hear a lot of music in my studios, whatever. When I get in my car, I love opera. I love um, symphonies. Wow, opera. I don't see you as an yeah, opera guy. I know, I know, I know. People, <laughs> you know, but I get in my car. Get in, Especially since you went to Downsview. For real, yeah, yeah, more yeah. Hey, Hard rock, metal, no, something. No, Downsview was a soccer, it was a soccer uh, crazy a school, soccer right? Haven, yeah, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I played there for five years. But that being said, uh, Andrea Bucelli is one of my favorites. Yeah. Right, that all star I, world, all star. Yeah, I, I get into my zone. I'm driving, you know, where I'm sitting at home, and you know, it puts you in a different place and it yeah. puts you in a good place. Transcends generations, he uh, reaches out to uh, everyone 100%. So, mine's got to be Elvis Presley, the king. Sure. I think he transcends generations. Yeah, absolutely. I think his music's still relevant today. I think he still sells today over 10 yeah, million yeah, digital yeah. downloads a year, absolutely. And the guy's been dead for like 40 years, I know. so he's still incredible. making money. So the deck is still, still making money. to this day. Uh, Pat, I want to thank you no, for coming on it's today. Been a it was an awesome talk. I thank appreciate you. your open and candidness. I thank you for all the hard work you do with the kids of the community and all the amazing work you do for the city of Bonn. We're going to do one thank last you. thing. I know you're, sure. you're not a big drinker, but our sponsor, Mill Street Organic, we're going to do a toast to soccer in Canada sure. 2026. We're going to hope that uh, they're going to do well. You never know. Hey, we could get surprised. We could get surprised. You never know what you, could uh, happen. You never know, right? Like, I see some amazing Things young happen. kids. <laughs> To Canada 2026. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. It's all about the game. And how you play it. It's all about control. And if you can take it. all about your debt. And if you can pay it. It's all about pain. And who's gonna make it.